heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land, out of that land into a good and spacious land, one flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. You go speak to Pharaoh about bringing my people out. What? What just happened? I was, I was there with you doing the rescuing, and then all of a sudden, you're, if I'm Moses, you're dead. You said, what was that at the end? So, how does Moses react? He, God just gave a pretty specific thing to do, right? How does Moses react? Negatively. Negatively. He says, wow. Uh, uh, right there. Uh, really? Me? But Moses says, who am I? that I should go to the Pharaoh. Okay, so Moses reacts with, he plays the inadequacy card. God says, I want you to do this. And his first thing is, I can't, what, who am I, who am I? How does God, that's how Moses reacts. How does God react to how Moses reacts? I will go with you. I heard it. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. Remember that phrase, okay? I will be with you. Shouldn't that have been enough? Shouldn't that be enough for any of us? That wasn't enough for Moses. And a lot of times it's not enough for us. Should have been enough. It wasn't. Do you know how long they keep going back and forth? I'll tell it. I'll shorten it to. Well, then it's about, well, what if, uh, what name, what if they ask me what your name is? Really? That's the best excuse you can come up with? I'll tell you. Tell them this is my name. This is who sent you. Uh, you know, I'm really not that great of a talker. And you know what God's response is? Who gives people their mouths? <laughs> I already said I'm with you. I'll do it. Uh, he's still pushing back. Get Moses. I mean, give my brother Aaron. He's a lot better. And it says, God gets mad at him. How many times? Finally, finally, Moses puts his excuses aside and took on the job God wanted him to do. Story two. Remember the next one we were talking about? It's found in Judges 6. I'm going to paraphrase for a matter of time, and if I mess this up, the Departments of Corrections can keep me in line. <laughs> Gideon, he's in a he's he's in a threshing floor, and he gets visited. Very interesting. I do want I don't want to miss any of the details of judges because I think the similarities in these stories are intriguing. He gets visited in a time before Israel had kings, before Judah had kings. And, let me read it. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now it's not the Egyptians, it's the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters. Okay. Then these other Midianites would come and raid their crops. They'd come in. It was a bad time. A bad time. The Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian. He sent them a prophet, I'm in verse 8, who said, This is what the Lord said, the Lord God of Israel. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you, gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the God of the Amorites in whose land you live. But you have not listened to me. Okay. This is their, this is their situation. The prophet lets them know where they're at. Now Gideon is threshing or doing this thing that he's grinding stuff out. And the angel of the Lord comes down and sat under the oak. Belonged to Joash, his dad. Where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. He's got to hide it so it doesn't get stolen. Angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and says, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That's, that's, you wouldn't get that from what he's doing. Mighty warrior. Hmm. Really? So, did you catch a familiar phrase from the first story? The Lord is will be with you. With you. Lord be with you. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon says... Sir, the Lord is with us. Why is all this stuff happening to us? Where are all those wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Do, uh, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now God has abandoned us and put us in the hand, hand of Midian. Lord turned to him, the Lord, interesting, turned to him and said, Go in the strength that you have, Gideon, and rescue Israel from the Midianites. Okay. He gives Gideon a job. Now, same set of questions. How did Gideon react? Are you tracking along with me in the 
person? Uh, 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 really? I'm the, why, uh, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. You notice he doesn't say, I'm not a soldier. I'm not a warrior. He doesn't say that. He says, how can I do that? My clan is the weakest. He's playing the inadequacy card, right? And then, again, right after his reaction, how does God react? Immediately after that. Verse 15, if you're following. Uh, 16. The Lord answered. I will be with you. Yep. I will be with you. Shouldn't that have been enough? Shouldn't that be enough for any of us? Was it enough for Gideon? Okay. Hold on. Stay right here. I got to fix something. Come back, and I just want to make sure if it's really you. He goes and prepares like the stuff. I'm skipping a lot of details. And pretty much his sacrifice is consumed. And now he knows, oh boy, it's really God. It's not a really good God impersonator. This really is God. <laughs> Was that the last test again you needed? No. Oh no. Give me the fleece. Give me the wet fleece on the dry ground. And you can almost imagine, like, as soon as he went back home, he's like, oh, I got it wrong. That's so much easier fate. I should have asked. He does the next time around. Give me the wet or whichever one. Yeah, he, he gets it both ways. He says, yeah, okay, I'll do that too. Question. Yeah. Can you still use the, uh, the fleece test? Sure. Did, do you think, do you think God uh, presented that test? Well, I don't have a sheep. Ha! <laughs> Maybe you can get one of those chamois things that people carry around with. No, no, honest. Yeah? I've, I've done this. It for sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it worked out okay. Mm -hmm. But then I got consciousness. It's a matter of unbelief. Yeah. I don't believe enough. So what? It, what does how it do mean? I? How do I know? Which is if, it, if it's from the evil one or from God? Well, I think God will be able to it's know our spirit. hearts. Yes, but I think God knows our hearts better than we do. And it, the way this story reached to me is, Gideon was sincerely wanting to know if this was really God speaking to him, and in that sincerity, in that spirit. He proposed to test. Does the story say God was angry with Gideon for testing him? No. no. says, I'll do that. Well, what if you do that? I'll do that too. So it seems like God is patient with us as we try to move from inadequacy or lack of belief to stronger belief. So, I think if you earnestly are seeking God's will and you throw him out a test, this story tells me he's big enough for that. Eventually... Gideon puts his doubts and his tests aside, and he does the job God asked him to do. Story three, you know what? Well, it's found in Luke 1. This part of the story is found in Luke 1, verse 26 to 38. See if you can hear any similarities. Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, a Calvary, and in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. What next? The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. She just she was very perceptive, didn't she? <laughs> but the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You are, given, you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. <coughs> his kingdom will never end. Now, that's quite a lot for somebody to tell you, right? How does Mary react? You know what? She plays the curiosity card, not the inadequacy card, followed by the logic card. <laughs> How can this be? I've never had any kid yet. How can this be? And God follows that with an explanation. God explains it. It's unusual, it's abnormal, but God gives her the explanation. 
The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who was barren is in her sixth month. And then this is fantastic, for nothing is impossible with God. Is that fantastic? There are all sorts of, and in fact, I, I want to also point your attention to verse 45. This is Elizabeth who she goes to see. You think those two had a couple of things to talk about? <laughs> Blessed is she, this is Elizabeth telling Mary, Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So, there are all sorts of interesting uh, questions we could ponder about why the Bible is so full of surprises. Is God a surprising God? If so, is it because... Um, is it that just the way he is, or is it because we don't know everything that we could about him? Interesting questions. We're not looking at those today. In the time <laughs> we have left, what I want us to think about is, maybe if we are ever surprised when we are asked by God, directly or indirectly, to do something, if we ever find that moment surprising, part of our surprise may be that we don't know ourselves as well as God knows us. Was Moses qualified to do that job? Was Gideon qualified to do the job God asked him to do? Was Mary qualified? I'll ask it in the inverse. Was Gideon qualified to bear a son? No. no. Was Mary, a young girl, qualified to lead uh, soldiers? No. Each of these people were qualified because, um, because of the abilities they had. One of the uh, phrases that I like is, God doesn't always call the equipped, but he always equips the call. So, we have the seminar that follows this one is about spiritual gifts. It's one of my favorite topics. Sometimes, some parts of it are new to us, some parts of it are familiar, some parts we've known and we've forgotten about. But the baseline concept is that God gives each one of us unique and specific gifts for the purpose of returning them to the larger group so that the group can benefit from them. I don't have all of your gifts, you don't have my gifts, but if we bring them back, offer them back to God, He can bless and multiply others, and we can be blessed. I hope, I hope we get something out of that. Uh, I hope, I imagine that will come through. So, three things as I wrap it up. Three things I want you to keep in mind if you get asked to do something and you are surprised by that. Here's the first one. Are you feeling like playing the inadequate card? <laughs> I say rejoice. You're in the perfect mindset for God to accomplish something with you. When you don't think you can do it, then you're going to reach out to God and say, I need some help. Do you think Gideon needed some help when his army got teared down to 300 dudes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was not a wise a tactical, a military tactic. He knew he needed God's help. That's the first thing. If you are feeling, if you have a moment of hesitance about doing something, celebrate that because you're in a great place for God to help work with you. Secondly, if you're in that moment and you might be surprised, I don't know what you'll be asked to do, and I don't know how you'll be asked to do it, but if it happens, second thing to keep in mind, we've said it several times today, God is with you. So I want us all to say God is with me, right on the count of three, one, two, three. God, God is, is with me. me. If you're feeling a little unsure, <coughs> not entirely sure you're up to the task, God is with me. Third thing, nothing is impossible. Those two sort of go hand in hand. We, we think about why it can't be done. God thinks about why it can be done and how he can change us in the process if we're willing to work with him and be grateful and responsive to the gifts that he gives us. That's what I hope we can keep in mind. And if you have some uh, discomfort with that, just know you're in very good shape. Actually, the young girl got it a lot quicker than the two dudes in those three stories. After she heard the explanation, she says, Okay, I'm your servant. May it be just like you say it is. So you might have that reaction. You might have Moses' reaction. Or you might have Gideon's. 
The good news is that God is willing to work with each of us. He just wants to partner with us to do something with us so that He can be glorified. That's what I hope we can take with us. And hopefully that sets up our afternoon session. So, I appreciated your question. We've got, like, oh, I don't know, 30 whole seconds for questions. Any other questions? No, it takes several minutes, actually. Okay. Let's thank you. Is there anyone to whom the idea, and please, uh, if you don't feel like raising your hand so everyone can see, just sort of do some sort of stall cycle. Is there somebody for whom the idea of spiritual gifts is a new idea, and it's okay for you to say yes? Because sometimes we throw words around in groups like this, and if you don't know the words, like, ah, oh, I don't really say it. So, spirit, you guys are somewhat familiar with the idea of spiritual gifts? Okay, that's good. You're ahead of some people. I knew somebody in their 80s who hadn't really grasped the idea or hadn't had it explained and to her in a way that she could embrace it. So I don't want that any of us to be in that spot. Because we'll all we all do have gifts. And part of the discovery that we're going to be having is some of you may already know what your gifts are. Some of you may not. We can find out what those are. But the ultimate benefit that I have found in my experience is if you're willing to return anything that came from God in the first place, you're changed in the experience and you're blessed in the experience. So I hope you can. I hope you already have had experience with that, and if you haven't, I hope that uh, you'll be willing to try that out. Let's take a couple of minutes to just uh, field any questions with Peter. Our whole afternoon's run just a couple of minutes off, so apologies, Dr. Jackson. We'll get to you very shortly. Um, let's take a couple of minutes to uh, follow up with questions for Peter, and then let's take two minutes uh, break. Those of you who might need to get to the restroom or get a drink and then uh, convene back in here. Uh, all of you are welcome for the Spiritual Gifts Seminar. I hope all of you will stay. I'm going to give books to those of you who plan to be here this week and next week so that that, that bears the most fruit for our investment. Um, if you're willing to do that or able to do that, that that's where I'd like. If you are not and you need a book anyway, let me know if there's an extra, we'll do that. If we run short, I'm going to ask couples to share, even though I think there's some exercises that we need to break out individually. So um, I apologize, I do have 22 of these books available, so we'll try to get those distributed. Questions for Peter? Yes? A comment and then a question. Okay. I'm assuming that you know what your spiritual gifts are. So, how old are you when you figure that out? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know that I know all of my spiritual gifts, but I have been able to um, identify some. So I probably, I think there are some gifts that we all have growing up that you might not connect spiritual to it, that they probably are or can be. So, uh, I've grown up singing. So somebody might say, well, you have the ability to do that, or you might be good at sports, or you might be good at math, or you might... So there are things that we are all gifted in. That doesn't necessarily mean that those are returned back in specific intentional ways to God's things. Uh, I think to answer your question and not duck it, I think I was probably... I probably knew that there were some things that God had given me, like some abilities, probably by uh, high school. And, and a lot of that was through doing stuff. We would be um, doing worship services or vespers or things in the school that I was at. And at some point you see where people's strengths are and then how that could be used, um, how God could use those, hopefully. So started then, then I saw some other ones. But I didn't know, I don't think I have, I don't like thinking I know everything I'm going to know. So I don't really know that I know all my gifts right now. But... I do know God has had to work with me, even in the context of this group, which is a very loving and supporting group. And I've been asked to do a couple of things, and my first reaction was, somebody asked me to teach youth years ago. Ms. Linda Glatz asked me, to, and I'm telling you, I had Moses' experience. My brother is a high school teacher. I, and we always get, people are always calling me Eric. And I thought, oh, this poor lady. She thinks that I'm Eric. She knew exactly I wasn't Eric. She said, no, I want you to. She had also asked her. She wanted me to teach you. And I went through the same thing. Oh, no, you want my brother. He teaches it. He can dance. And I, she waited me out. She said, I think you should try it anyway. So I didn't know that that was a gift that would be so um, meaningful to me. 
if, if I would let it, that I, I've been blessed in a lot of ways doing those things. That's one of the, that's one of the big things about gifts. You didn't give yourself the gift, so you don't have to act uh, embarrassed that you're good at something. You can't take credit for that. That's a direct gift from God. So you don't have to worry about being humble. You didn't do it. If you're good at something, say, great, this is something God did. How is it that I can return it in a way that can maybe help someone else? And oh, by the way, how can you keep your eyes and heart open for when you're going to be blessed with someone else's spiritual gifts? Because it's going to happen. We're all part of the cycle and the chain. So much so that if we don't bring our gifts back to the group, the group is just not the same without it. Not the same. Okay, so did that answer? It did, now you got a follow-up question. Oh yeah, follow-up question. <laughs> what, you want me to do what for 800? <laughs> <laughs> so is it likely that I'm going to hear from God when it's time for my spiritual gift to be revealed? Or is it more likely that I'll hear this from others around me? Well, that's a fantastic question. You might get a he, he, he might already have a spiritual gift that others recognize, and if you don't see it yet, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Several in fact. Several. I think you catch this. Like, you see, like, like, uh, <laughs> like I said, you, you complete a lot of change around here. You, you make this up the better. All right? You got a, a unique gift, many of them. So. Yeah, I think the, the longer we can keep him from finding that all out, though, he'll just keep doing it. I'm so thrilled to have Dr. Jackson with us, a friend of Maury, Dr. Jackson, and he may be able to walk through some ways in which we become aware of that. I don't know that there's one way that we all become aware of our gifts the exact same way. Certain, we might have to hear it from others who see an opportunity that we can't. Honestly, isn't that what Jesus did with every single one of his disciples? Would anybody from the outside say, yeah, these dudes are the guys you shouldn't trust your whole ministry to? No. Really? But he could see gifts and strengths in people that if they were developed and, and cultivated, could he knew things about them that they didn't know about themselves and with importance critical. With the power, we've been talking about God is with you, with the power of the Holy Spirit, those things can grow and we can become aware. But I would always encourage us to keep our minds and our hearts open because you may be surprised by what you, you might pick up one that you didn't have three years ago or you just don't know. That's God's, that's God's decision and his timing based on what I believe he assesses that a certain group can use at that time and in that moment.